to understand about meditation, you have to find your way to a certain simplicity. We're so used in the world we live in to placing our hope and our faith in complexity. But all of us know at a deeper level of our being that real peace is to be found in a profound simplicity of spirit. I want you to listen to these words of St. Paul writing to the Ephesians. Your world was a world without hope and without God. But now, in union with Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood. For he himself is our peace. One of the things that all of us are invited to know from our own experience is that we have been brought near, that through the life and death and resurrection of Jesus, all of us have been brought near to this profound peace. Aristotle defined peace as the tranquility of order. And peace is necessary for all growth. It's necessary for being so that each of us can realize our full potential. Peace could perhaps be described as the harmony of directed energy. And that is what meditation is about. It isn't about passive stillness. It's about the realization of the nearness of each of us to the source of creation, the source of our own creation and of all creation. And it's realizing that the power of creation, the energy of creation, flows in our hearts. The enemy of peace is distraction. We lose sight of the harmonizing goal of our life. The harmonizing power within which we have our being. We lose sight of it. And distraction is caused by desire. By the wish to possess And the loss of the goal leads us away from what is real into unreality. I remember again for a moment the way of meditating.
We sit down. We sit with our spine upright. We breathe calmly and regularly. And we begin to say our word. And the word I recommend you to say, Mara Natha. Four equally stressed syllables, Ma, Ra, Na, Tha. And we say our word, we say our mantra from the beginning to the end. And the purpose of the word is to keep us on the path, to take us away from illusion, from desire, into the reality that is God. And as long as we are on the way, as long as we are saying our mantra, we're turning aside from distraction and we're on the way to make contact with the root from which we are sprung. Now, once we lose sight of our goal, we become confused. We become frightened. And that is when we tend to seek solace in more and more distraction and in more and more illusion. Now, what the way of meditation invites all of us to do is to confront the unreality, the fear, the illusion, the distraction. And to pass through it. And on the other side of all this illusion, fear and unreality is peace. The tranquility of order. Energy directed to its ultimate end. And what each of us is invited to know in meditation is that that energy is love. And what each of us is invited to discover from our own experience is that God is love. As I suggest to you, meditation has nothing to do with quiet reverie. It's to do with wakefulness. And we awaken to our nearness to God. All our powers, all our potential, directed towards their true end. And that end is God, the end who is our beginning. And in the experience of the peace of meditation, it is revealed to us where we are. It is revealed to us that we are on the journey away from fear, 
away from unreality, away from illusion, into the only reality there is. And that reality is God. That reality is love. Now each of us has to learn to say our word, to say our mantra. And we have to learn to say it from the beginning of our meditation until the end. To root it in our hearts so that we can listen to it sounding there in the depth of our being. And learning to root the mantra takes time. And if you ask yourselves, how much time will it take? You can answer the question by saying that it takes only that amount of time to realize that it takes no time at all. We're already there. Listen to St. Paul again. But now, in union with Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood. For he himself is our peace. This is what we have to come to understand and to know in meditation and to know it as a personal experience in our own hearts, each one of us. That our redemption is accomplished. That the power of the Spirit is set free in our hearts. And what prevents us from realizing this is that we are distracted. Our minds are cluttered. And we must free them. And this is what meditation is about. And that's the importance of returning to it every morning and every evening. To sit down and in saying your mantra to loosen the chains, the bonds that bind you to unreality, to illusion, and to fear. And to understand that those bonds have no power over you. If only you are open to the experience of Jesus. And his experience is this, that he is the beloved Son of God. And this is what he has achieved for us, that we can be open to the self-same experience, that we our sons and daughters are the loving, compassionate, 
and understanding further, and that our meaning is to be wholly open to his love. wholly open to the nearness of his mysterious being, wholly open to our own hearts, to our own centre. For in our centre he is to be found. And meditation, saying the mantra from beginning to end, saying the mantra every morning and every evening, is simply our pilgrimage to that center where he is and where we are in him. <laughs> 